Um, I was wondering if you could talk about any memories you have of the first rehearsal of Emeralds with Balanchine. Does anything stand out in your memory at all? Personally, I was so surprised when he did the solo by what he was doing. I had never imagined that you could use arms alone like that. I mean, here we are doing pas de bras in class, officially, but you do them when you're very young. And then you usually bypass those like, pas de bras only exercises when you're a more developed dancer, and you integrate them in dancing. But to start the solo with those arms, a, a total experience. It was moving in a way because it was like someone looking at herself, discovering her arms, her assets in a way. Yes, yes. And um, it was just extremely moving. It made me think of the paintings of women in their toilet. You know what toilet? Do you, is that what you say? Toilet. Yeah. Toilet. <laughs> and, and, you know, half naked, half with, you know, things, perfume and things. That sort of feeling associated with that. Do you think it was that French thing again? Because French thing again. Mm, yeah. I think it was. Because of you and I the music. I think it was. Yeah. From the music, the tenderness, the caressing feeling, the sensuousness of the music, mm. the strings and the very, yeah, the very and harmonious, peaceful, like a cat licking its hair, you know, <laughs> like a cat, you know. Yes, yeah. the, those are basic uh, wonderful uh, things. Yeah, I remember starting off and he was uh he would he started off with an idea of a painting of oh, a really? romantic mm -hmm. picture and so he went around to all the people and, and we would do something and then they would fix it with everybody else and he really didn't uh it wasn't like it, he cared terribly much because he asked the dancers what do you think is a good another pose or something <laughs> And he did that another time uh, in uh, Guno, oh, and and the said uh, okay, uh, and then he started doing the arms. Okay, uh, uh, Joyce, what would you like to do? And then they do this. And he said, <laughs> okay, that's good. And he he might have said it if he didn't like it. Oh no, that's not good. But uh, he he t took about four or five different things from the oh. dancers. They just made up something, and I said. Because he knew what he wanted. He wanted a little picture, and he wanted a typical look, a French look, I guess, for this little yes, this little vignette. And that's how he started. He was thinking, I think, I think, who knows what's in his head. Uh, but I, I felt he was in his, He was trying to make a picture come alive. Mm. That's how. Do you think it was true then, as I think some reviewers said, that um, the first section was meant to be an homage to France, the second America, and the third Russia? Yes, it obviously, was. definitely. Yeah. Grosso modo, certainly. No question about that. No question about that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, those were the times and the places where he lived also, yes. you know, to quite a degree, and very emotional charged lives, you know, with Yagilev, my God, friends, the possibility of the Paris Opera, and then the lungs and having to stop that, and then airing for a while, you know, being, you know, taking jobs. Yes, France remained something. You know, the, for the Russians from St. Petersburg, they see France, France with a platonic eye also. <laughs> yes, they think highly of France in a way that French people might not even be able to do. Mm. They have a higher idea. St. Petersburg has a high idea of art, and they have a high idea of France. Mm. And Balanchine had a high idea of France. Yeah, that's right. fascinating. Yeah. I really? thought he, it seems like the, the jewels were quite, the, you know, uh, the key. This green, yes. you know, was uh, this mood, and uh, the right. music was sort of greenish and lush, <laughs> you know. Yes. And and the music for Ruby's is was just. certainly just uh, powerful and strong. Absolutely. And then of course diamonds. Yep. I and was amazed that, that he did this when I first. He told me in Saratoga that I'd be in this. And before we came, and so I and I thought, oh, you know, this is not a great idea. You know, you know. <laughs> oh, about the jewels, the three jewels. Yeah, I, I was pessimistic about. Well, the you whole weren't the project. only one, I think. <laughs> Didn't Lincoln say something about have something Lincoln Kirstein about? What a dreadful idea. I think I read that somewhere. I didn't tell him. I thought, oh, that's, gonna, that's really great. And 
how's he going to do that? And I, so anyway, uh, he did, and it was turned out to be really uh, one of the great, uh, certainly a season. Amazing. I mean, a real. If you had, if you, we needed, I'm sure we did. Uh, it was a big lift for the company oh, yeah. because it was very popular too. The craft he had available, obviously, how ready he was to change countries mm -hmm. with his choreography, his dancers. And you know, how they all, always say, you know, like Fabergé, Mozart, Balanchine, you know. But it's true. Yeah. It's yeah. true. It's not too much. It's yeah. true. Because the endless craft and, you know, because I'm from Brittany and it's very aquatic also, this section with all those girls like algae and mermaids, you know, and the sea with all its wonderful, diverting, pleasant thing, but it's danger, it's mystery. Mm. You know, it really is a tremendous re representation of, of the sea also mm. in a sense. Well, you mentioned and fine. Peleas, Melisande, by the sea, you know, Mm. all those wonderful things and Shylock, you know, all that incredible mood and atmosphere also. It's, it's a sad almost thing also, mm. nostalgic. So many sailors lost at sea. I mean, there's so many things associated with that. Do you think that Balanchine had in mind the story of Peleas at all because of all that running and escaping and forest feeling? And since Once you digest those things, mm. what's left of it? Who knows? Yeah. In this case, yes, th there might be traces, mm. symptoms of what that, that thing was, longing for something that is unattainable. Now, you kept mentioning Fokine. Were you teasing, or do you actually no, see Fokine? No, I mean, you know, the Podrobras from Fokine that began a sort of irregular. He was the first choreographer, really, after Petit Pas, who was always Versailles with the well-ordered gardens and things and all this. He is the one who began to break a little bit of lines and, and put more sort of impressionistic feeling mixed with the schooling in a way. Mm -hmm. And so when you're left alone with a long pot de bras session and bourrées only, you can begin to you know, reminisce and salute. I do it only as a salute, mm -hmm. as a little salute. Hello, Mr. Fokin, hello, Mr. B, you know. Only like that, as a reverence, a little, little footnote private footnote, I love you, I love you, and I love you, <laughs> you know, like Valentine's. You but know. it would have been Fokine coming through Balanchine, yes, not Balanchine definitely. paying. Balanchine had, a, you know yeah. how often in class he would mention the, and do those pot bras himself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Did oh, he ever mention Fokine? He talked about him, he talked about his adora, he talked about different people like that. He never really spoke too much about Gorski or the people that were really Early. his seminal, you know, things there. But maybe also because he didn't know if we would know who they were, maybe. And well, he admired uh, Sophie. We did it. Oh, uh, yes. And he took, oh, yeah. he said, uh, all the skirts will go because the footwork is so interesting yes. that is missed so much. So he, that right. was a sign of respect for the oh, choreography. That was oh, yeah. I wondered, um, the partnering seems so complicated in that opening section, the spacing and the sudden shifts in direction and the, mm. the arms. Do you think that was it all for you? I never thought of it at the time. Uh, maybe it was, uh, but uh, there's a lot of geography in there, going this way and that way and working, and, and where you are is so important, yes. and spacing. So it's not really that difficult, the choreography, but getting around, maneuvering around to be in the right spot and having the right line is difficult. Mm. But I never thought that maybe it was. You know. I think that he challenged you where he knew you would be giving wonderful results. It was like creating a difficulty that doesn't exist. Building a difficulty to see Conrad, to show, to make Conrad show how to unravel and solve the difficulty. Everything should have some passion to it, you know, I mean, uh, and what he would allow us to do and what he told us to do oftentimes was uh, to have pressures and to push and pull and make things. You can always grab something, but you can always take something yeah. and or move your arm with, like this uh, mm. with power or 
loose. But I'm saying all that kind of stuff is what I guess then it looks wild. To me, it's very, I wouldn't think that, but maybe that's, I, and if it's creating that feeling, I want that. You do want yes. it. Oh, yeah. It's when you said the yanking thing. The yanking things, yeah. I know. You know what? When you look at an old fashioned partnering class, you know, the repertory of the 19th century, where the man is waiting for the woman, walking behind her, too close to her usually, and she does her preparation, her pirouette, and is right there. He wanted to make the two people free and connecting and using each other well, but not in a way that is so predictable and um, coagulated, you mm -hmm. know? So it's a difference. There isn't, frankly, he's revolutionized partnering, hasn't he now? The things that we used to do with hands like this, pirouettes from here or promenades with, tips of fingers only and things like that constantly all the time. Mm -hmm. I think he has liberated the partnering a great, great deal mm -hmm. so that people can be free and can relate only when they need each other mm -hmm. and never otherwise in a sort of like stuck way. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, the partnering and is. She, she does something and she's doing an air rest. Voilà. Like right. this is the old way. You support. This is the old way. See, now you got, and you have, but you can't. You can't right, get your hand it, exactly, out, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But here, with him, this way. This. See, you, can can yeah. Yeah. you can disengage. You can disengage. You can go. And if anything, let's say. It used say, to be untoward. literally like that before. Yeah. Yeah. And then he hated that. He said like moignon, which is like maimed hands. Oh, you yes. know maimed. So he, when he had to have something a little more firm, he would invent to do it holding here so the girl could at least oh, so you could retain turn. a pretty yeah. hand. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Is this particularly true of emeralds, do you think, that it's a good way to look at the partnering differences? He did that all the time. All his ballets, Libes yeah. yeah. Leader. Uniform, yeah. Oh, yes. All La Source. No also. grasping. Or Even La Source. Yeah. yeah, no grasping, no clinging. Yeah, no clinging, no grasping. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I was interested, some Frederick Franklin was here watching this oh, morning. Oh, yes. And he said that the music seems so simple, but it's actually very difficult mm. for emeralds because it kind of lulls you. And, and because it does seem simple, you're not quite so prepared for no. the immense surprises in the choreography. Yes. Is that, do you find that a problem, or did you? Uh, I don't think I ever thought about this music. It was oh. just, and. Uh, I, and I haven't heard the music for a long time. So no, also, you, you had I been listening to it, maybe yeah. I would have heard those some of the phrases that are key to, to you know, the pressures of the music. You just go, da, ya, ti, ta. Well, you can hear the, the swelling, almost so the breath before you're going to do that. Yeah. It, so I never thought of it, and mm. so that's in setting it on new people suddenly, uh, it, you know, uh, what is the There music? isn't well, how, really what's a the script count? to yeah, follow, right. exactly. Also, I think that some of the sophistication and complication of the choreographies occur by, by clusters. Mm. We have little clusters of complications. Then we have moments of absolute riding the crest of the waves. Mm. And then we go back to little clusters of shell to be organized, and then we go in the sea again, floating in the, you know? Mm. There's also those moments, you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, of course. Uh, yeah. s let's take the runs. There's no sp specific time on three that you're going backwards or anything. It can be, lots of adagios can go, it can be a little bit later, it can be, yeah, so it's no, sp no specific time where everything has to be done unless it's sharp. So you flow through. That's right. And that has a nice, and, and choreographers that do flow through the music like that are the best ones, I think, oh, rather yeah, than oh, having yes. everything on account. Oh, yes, uh, of course. So th we get to dance the way we feel, you yes. know, and without worrying yes. about uh, that kind of thing. And in this, since it's all melodic like this, we can, uh, we can have that freedom to do that. Now, I wondered, uh, watching um, James Fayette and Carla Corbis, it seems like this is a choreography that requires dancers with a real sense of the quality or the oh, coloring of the movement. Oh, sensitivity. Is that like one of the most important things? For oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Because, uh, you know, Balanchine told me something 
which was very flattering. And I, I mean, because with all the short, li short limits that I knew I had and certain things that I had, I felt very rewarded. He said, you know, I will use you as my little graft for style. And I said, that really got me like, because again, the idea that Balanchine would worry about styles was like something that I thought was maybe dangerous or he'd say, no, no, be careful, no smooching, you know, like he told me once or twice when I would do a little too much, he'd say, no smooching, dear. Smudging. And I knew I was going too far. So to keep me down a bit. And so he said, I, he said, because you know, you're French and you know the style of certain things that are not always familiar for Americans. And he said, nothing wrong about the Americans, they're so free because they don't have style basically implanted on them that they will do anything that you ask them to do. And that's great because they, they won't be preoccupied with the wrong things. But because you have style, you can be useful and that'll be nice for me to use for certain things. Yeah. I don't know, but he used me in the end. I did a lot of French things. Yes. <laughs> I did a lot of French music in that company and he did much more French music than French choreographers do. And I think he always loved French music. And you know, his time with Diaghilev, when he told me he had heard Ravel play and had met all these people, you know, and you know, he must have absorbed a lot of French music. He told me that the new pas de deux he did in Jules, that little Sh Shylock thing that he had carried in his pocket for years, mm -hmm. thinking, I wish I had an occasion to put it somewhere. And then years after doing Jules, in 75, which is at least nine years later, he put that new pas de deux on in Jules. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like a painter who wants to finish a little thing in a painting that nobody knows. Mm -hmm needs to be finished, only the painter, yeah, and yeah. he did it. <laughs>